Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. It's me, Andres Salazar, you know, this channel? It's been a, been a little bit. Um, I've been just so busy editing this documentary uh, right there in the background, and I'm almost done. Let me say, really quickly, uh, editing is laborious. While you might think it's creative, and it is, it's also just very taxing and like detailed and organizationally challenging. So uh, I will be hopefully done and maybe even as early as this weekend, which means that once that, this is kind of like a rough cut I'm gonna to send to some people. Once that's done, I am going to, as my dad says, hit it hard. We're going to bump up a bunch of videos because you know, after reading this comic, I kind of missed it. It's been a while since I've read comics. I've just been doing all this film stuff, which if you want to check out, go check out the Patreon. The Patreon has all the film stuff. I have another channel, my personal channel that goes into the documentary and that thing. So check that out because that is storytelling just like comics and I do love it. So check out my Patreon. Uh, but for now, we're in natural light, no artificial ring lights, just natural light, talking about Booster Gold, um, the thief from the 30th century. Wasn't he, was he a thief from the 30th century? And he got the technology, and he got the, the Legion flight ring, and Skeets was from the future, right? And he came somehow, he got transported into modern time. Remind me, guys, it's been a while. But this is Dan Jurgens joint, dude. And if you don't know Jan Dern, if you don't know who Dan Jurgens is, he is um freaking one of the best back in the day. He this is like what is this 86? Yeah, dude. This is the golden era of comics. I'm telling you. That period, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, or 89, 88, that stuff is the best. You got some Kevich, you got Miller, you got Moore, you got all the heavy hitters, all the great comics, Wolfman's coming out, Jim Lee's coming out, all the great stuff is just like banging. And Dan Jurgens, I first knew him from um, Justice League. He worked with Keith Giffen. You guys know I love Keith Giffen. So uh, yeah, dude, we're doing a Dan Jurgens. He's the writer, he's the artist. He has a different person inking him, doesn't he? Yeah, Mike DiCarlo. You see Mike DeCarl on a lot of books too. He's like, he inks everybody. So let's go through this. It is a standard superhero spandex affair from DC, the Distinguished Composition, uh, Competition, Detective Comics Company. Um, they're great, love comics. It's gonna be fun. Let's check it out. Let's do some comics. Are you ready? Okay, everybody, let's take a look at this bad boy. Um, I had to change my camera settings. It was at 4K, and we really don't need 4K. Looks, you know, 1080p is totally fine, especially on YouTube. You know, no 4K video on Booster Gold. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's just go through this. You know, it's kind of a standard superhero in the 80s. There's, But there's some kind of fun things he's doing here. Um, one is, you know, just when I started reading this, I just was, it brings me back, you know? I really love this inking. I love the art style. It's this old school. I guess it's considered old school now. I just like the way they use these different tools. I feel like nowadays, you like you got a guy who does just rapidographs or just in tech pens or just brush or just this. And they kind of focus on one thing. Back here, back in this era, you were a comic book inker, for instance, let's just say. You knew how to use a brush, a crow quill, a speed ball, a, you know, tech pen, a rapidograph, a marker. You knew all the tools. Nowadays, you get artists who just kind of focus on one kind of like look instead of two. They used them all, and it's just fun to see the hatching, the kind of shadowy creation, the the blacks, just everything in here. I just, it's just fun. I just enjoy it. I enjoy the line width changes, all that kind of stuff. We start off with the caper as usual, kind of like a, 
usual action story. Start off with the caper and uh, Booster Gold rolls it. Now, here's the thing. I didn't know Booster Gold had a cape. This was new to me. Um, so I was like, what? He had a cape. So maybe, and he doesn't have the cover. Maybe uh, he, he gets rid of the cape this issue. Dude, go bots. Say what you will. They might have been ripoff of Transformers, but I ain't hate not GoBots. Oh, there's Blue Beetle. The teamwork right there. Lynn Wayne. We did an episode. Well, the last episode was about Neil Adams, rest in peace. But I think a couple after that, before that, was we did a Blue, uh, Blue Beetle. So go check that out on the channel. Um, I don't know how they did this little technique here. This little... Um, where they get inked work and then they color it. They put like a, like a, it's like a overlay. I don't know how they, I'm curious if you know how they did that. I'd be curious to know back in the day. Now you do it in Photoshop, but back then, I don't know how they did those little like, was it like an overlay, like an actual like laminate overlay that was scanned? I don't even know. So I'm curious. I do like these kind of fun little computer, uh, you know, looking effects they're not computer effects but they're kind of like to give a tech techy kind of flavor to it yeah oh we got some somewhat cheesecake <laughs> here with it's just fun and also i like the, the flat colors you can kind of see the plates are slightly off a little bit and that's kind of fun i i, I like that you see like the plate a little bit off the coloring is slightly jilted on his hair i love blue hair dude i'm a huge fan of blue hair my book i'm working on pro, um shangri-la states which is on again on the patreon you can check that out shangri-la i use blue hair dude i'm all about blue hair for the black i just which makes me wonder is his outfit supposed to be blue or is it black that's interesting I always thought it was a navy blue, but then if you're using blue for the black hair, maybe that's black too. Like Batman, right? Is Batman's outfit is blue? Or is it black? It's actually is blue though. It is actually blue. I'm I'm going for blue. It doesn't make you question. But this is really actually this is really nice. Look at this. It's actually nice cartooning right there. I wish I wish they put the artists that's really, that's actually really nice. Some good action here. Dan Jurgens was great. He's one of the few kind of artist writer teams for these superhero books. I mean, there were, I mean, artist writer like single. Um, you know, John Byrne, did John Byrne do, no, he was always with Chris Claremont. Keith Giffen did. He did his own stuff. Dan Jurgens. Most of them, though, they were just one or the other. I'm thinking of this era who did both. There weren't that many, to be honest. I like the snow effect. That's always cool. Miller does a really fun snow effect. If you look at a Sin City, it's got a nice one. I like this. I like these, these panels are all really great. These are for me are really hard to draw. These full length panels. I like when they pop out like this. Pretty cool. That's nice. Good face. We've got some interpersonal drama here with the the couple. It's just kind of fun to read and kind of like get a full story, you know, for a dollar or whatever. Again, that effect. I want to know how they do that. Because the it, it's got to be done in some sort of photostat type of thing. And the, I think the the colorist just says, you know, make this this a certain color. And I think I think they do it on the the printer side of things. Post um, art submission, you know. I could be wrong. Look at that. That's cool. Like Ferrari. 
looks like a Ferrari. Got a Maxwell Lord kind of vibe. Mm, that looks a little wonky, but it's okay. We'll, we'll <laughs> let it go. Pretty fun, man. Oh. Yes, Superman's coming. That's kind of one of the deals with him is he... You know, he's he's not really a superhero yet. He's kind of like trying to do good, but he's not getting the the good vibrations from everybody. Just fun. I I really like these comics. They're they're just they're a joy to read. You know, they do feel a little cliché. They're a little bit old school kind of writing a lot of verboseness but you know that's it's kind of like writers felt like they had to like put some words in there to get paid you know they wanted to make it something to enjoy i mean you read this this takes you know 20 minutes versus a comic nowadays could be like five you know okay that's it that's all for me thanks for watching again hopefully next week we're going to do a lot more videos i want to kind of like bump it up again um Thank you guys. Check out the Patreon and talk to you later. Bye.